it's all about. Cause you always hear about musicians. Oh, I got this problem with my hands. I have this. And it's usually because of a lack of balance. So music addict, now it's your time. You can ask your question to Jordan. Okay. Hi, George. Uh, the WP has been in the business for uh, uh, almost 40 years. So what is actually the most technically challenging and intellectually stimulating song in your catalog? Oh my God. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of music through so many years and definitely many of the songs have many challenges, but certain ones maybe pose more than others. Like, uh, something like a dance of eternity. That's just an instrumental, that's just uh, crazy and all out many different rhythm. <laughs> a lot of technical stuff. Uh, I'd say that that's probably one that, that has, uh, a lot of challenges stimulating and, you know, many levels. So I choose that one. Oh, okay. Sure. So next question is. You were actually uh, one of the technically gifted and greatest KODs alive. So do, do, do you have any secrets or tips, uh, let's say in the, your fingering techniques in your showmanship? Yeah. So I'm very blessed and lucky because when I was really young, I went to Juilliard, which was the, you know, uh, very famous music school in New York city. And I was training to be a classical pianist. And I was a student of a woman named Catherine Parker, who was the assistant to uh, a very famous woman named Rosina Levine, who was probably one of the most famous or the most famous piano teacher of the last 150 years. So I had a direct kind of lineage down from this amazing, you know, professorship, if you will. So I learned in a very, um, very amazing way. Like, so the technique that I learned at the piano, the way that she taught me to use my hands and, you know, and just approach playing was probably a very, you know, not probably a really, really high level of, of, in, of, in, of instruction. So that stays with me no matter what I do. Uh, and that I guess is, you know, one of the secrets, but the other one is, you know, that I'm very passionate about what I do and I really like to focus and practice. And I, when I practice, I do it and I can try many different techniques in many different ways. And, uh, and I think that's, you know, patience is a big part of it. Uh, learning proper technique is a big part of it and all those things kind of combined. And also the things I was just mentioning about kind of like the headspace is a big part of it too, because. You know, you never want to, when you're practicing a physical instrument, like a keyboard, you never want to push yourself so hard that your hands become like damaged in any way. So you need to know when to stop. So you need to have a balance in your, you know, your, your physical mental place. And that's what it's all about. Cause you always hear about musicians. Oh, I got this problem with my hands. I have this. And it's usually because of a lack of balance. So, um, that's, that's kind of like where I'm coming from. Oh, yeah, sure. So, okay. One more question. Okay. This is just an imaginary question. Okay. Let's say we came to the end of the world. So you have to choose only one song to bring to the next life. So what will be the song will be from Jim Gete? Yeah. Wow. Well, 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 today, every day could be a different answer to that. But let's, let's bring the title track from a view from the top of the world. Uh, that song really is it totally kind of expresses a lot and is very dream theater and you know has all the different moments in it from epic to technical to emotional so i'll bring that one oh okay thank you george uh we are from music ethics michelle okay thanks thank you for your question music ethics.